Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Arcona Buran, or at least that's how I'm gonna pronounce it. This is an Ivan B design. You can see uh, his logo there on the pivot. This is really, really cool. It's got a whole bunch of uh, interesting elements here. I'm gonna tell you guys all about it. This knife is available on the imports section on the Knife Nuts Podcast website. Uh, if you're not familiar with Knife Nuts Podcast, I'm gonna make sure that the website's linked right down below. Um, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll make sure that this knife specifically is linked. When I checked, these were sold out. I don't know if they actually plan on making more, but I still wanted to share with you guys my thoughts today. Thanks so much to Levon of Knife Nuts Podcast for sending this to me to take a look at. Thanks so much to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. So who is Arcona? It's my understanding, but they outsource a lot of the uh, work and like, you know, the machining and stuff like that, uh, to a company in China, whoever the OEM is for this knife, um, their quality is off the charts. This thing is ridiculous. Uh, I'm kind of surprised that the price is only what it is. Um, this just feels like an above and beyond knife, uh, for what you're getting. It really outclasses, um, in my opinion, stuff that I've handled from like Wii knives and, um, best stack and I mean they're they're great those OEMs are great um, but this is this is really up there it's really 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 nice let's go ahead and get a measurement overall length of the Buran coming in at I think it's like eight and a half yeah eight and a half inches blade length 3.75 cutting edge three and a half inches let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2 I probably should point out that this knife came in all black and also a full stone wash, both on the scales and the blade. I think you guys might have seen that variant in my unboxing. Anyways, you can see here that this is about the same overall length as the Ontario Rat Model 1, so definitely not a small knife. How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3, which is, here we go right there. Uh, once again, definitely on the larger side, a little bit longer actually than the Spyderco PM2, definitely larger than the Para 3. How about up against the Demco AD 20.5? There we go. Last but not least, the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and the Benchmade Bug Out. All right. How's the action on this guy? Holy moly, the action is incredible. This uses the GTC Integral, or Interframe Lock, I think is what we call it. You can see the lock is actually carved into the scales rather than it just being the edge of the scale, right? Where they just cut and then the rest of it is, right? I kind of like this because you still get everything that a frame lock is, which is a little bit more surface contact than the liner lock, right? Um, but the pressure from your hand is not affecting the lockup, right? Some people say that that's a benefit of a frame lock, being able to hold it in place. Eh, I think proper geometry will hold a blade in place as long as you're not doing something stupid with it, right? You're like, what if I'm batoning with my pocket knife? Then you need a different, you need to be using something else to baton with, right? Um, this works. It does everything a frame lock should do, but I like that I can squeeze this and not mash the, the lock face into the tang of the blade further. I find that that just causes issues with lock stick and lock rock over time. Uh, and so I think this is, I think this is cool. I feel like I can kind of squeeze as hard as I want. Also, you know, it seems like even having my finger right on top of that is not affecting the action whatsoever. This is a front flipper that is tuned very well. You can see here I can use the side of my finger to open it. I can use my thumb to open it, but you can also use that little slot in the blade to uh, manipulate it. The detent feels perfect, just everything. You can see here the action on this is just spectacular. Very controlled, it's not like an actual, you know, like a, I don't know why I started to say actual, it's not like a guillotine where the thing comes down so fast that you don't have time to react. It's just really, really smooth. And uh, everything just sort of, it's second nature. The moment that I took this knife out of the packaging, it felt like, Everything just worked exactly right. The detent felt like it was good. 
it was, a, it was a good contrast or a good relationship with the blade length and mass, right? And where, you know, the front flipper was located, how long that little point was, right? Or how much leverage you could get off of that little slot in the blade. Even, I think, can I get it? No, I feel like I can't. That's the hardest way to open it is with your thumb, but I, I would prefer to open it any of the other ways. On top of that, there is no double clutch. It's very easy to disengage the lock with one hand, thanks to a generous cutout right here. The blade will fall, you know, smooth but casually to your thumb right about in the sharpening choil position. So, yeah, <laughs> that's great. Uh, it's, uh, it's really awesome. I have no problem with the action whatsoever. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'll get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find this right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. I took this knife apart and it was ridiculously easy. Very simple. The pivot is obviously captive, um, but uh, we have a T8 pivot and then we have T8 hardware. Uh, very minimal, just a couple of screws on each side, and one of the screws actually goes all the way through to the pocket clip, which has a mounting position on the other side. So, minimal hardware, frame lock, sandwich construction with a backspacer, super simple. Uh, that's it's, it's pretty much the standard for simple um, disassembly, so I have no, no issues there. Carry profile, almost skipped over that. Uh, thickness up against the Spyderco Pair 3, it's a little thicker, right? It's not like monstrously thick, but it's definitely a little thicker than the Pair 3. Length and height up against the PM2 and Pair 3, you can see here. Lengthwise, we're looking at about exactly the same as the PM2, perhaps a hair longer. Uh, definitely longer than the Pair 3. Uh, it's still not, not quite as tall though. The humps on the PM2 and Pair 3 clear it. So, shouldn't be, I mean, for as large a knife as it is, it actually does carry pretty compact. These are full tie and they are milled out on the inside for weight reduction. You can see here, yeah, heavy pockets there. M390 for the blade steel. And then like I said, your choice of black or stone washed. Weight, again, we're looking at 3.75 inches of blade. The weight on this guy is about 4.75. So the ratios are not, you know, perfect, but you know, it's still a pretty big knife full titanium and sub five ounces. Balance is exactly where you put your index finger in the standard position. So it really doesn't feel like an almost five ounce knife. It feels like more like a four ounce knife uh, for people who are, you know, real sort of in tune with that. Uh, but yeah, picking this up, it feels very balanced and it feels like you're carrying a light, you know, it's it, there's a lot of blade for how light it feels. Moving on here. Oh, uh, blade stock thickness. Let's go ahead and do that. This looks 135 to 145. Eh, you know what? No, I'm going to say it's 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 got it's 145 thousandths. That's what I'm going to guess. Nope, I should have stayed with my first one. It's actually, it's about 140 thousandths. So that's, it's about the same as the Spyderco PM2. All right. This has a very futuristic sort of robotic, right? It, might, it looks like maybe a knife that Master Chief would carry. Um, I uh, Sometimes I like the more robotic look and sometimes I don't. I think with this, everything goes together and it looks good. I like how, you know, the, the lines are milled. I like that it looks really, you know, kind of, I don't, should I say, like dystopian future, right? It's, it's cool. The nice thing is, is that whatever you, you know, however you feel about the lines, uh, there's no sharp edges here. It looks like, the, I mean, the, the impression that this gives off is that when you grab it, it's going to be angular and aggressive. And no, it's actually really, really comfortable. This spot right here, this flat spot is absolutely 100% meant to be used as a choke up position. And it works. It's not a curved choil, but it does work. And there's enough distance between the edge of this and the actual cutting edge that you're going to know, like, hey, I'm starting to slip. There's no guard there, but you're going to know. On top of that, there's traction right here from these little jimping lines. Um, the uh, ramp on the back of the blade mixed with the fact that this area also has jimping means that you can lock in really, really well. There's actually quite a few different positions that you can hold this. There's a lot of open runway here for your hand feels good. It feels natural. It feels like, you know, depending on the circumstance, you know, you can kind of reposition your hand to get the way that you want to. And on top of that, the fidget factor on this guy is just really great. And that, in, that interlock, that whatever that GTC lock is, uh, just makes it, I mean, it's like you don't even notice it. It's almost like a, uh, 
It, it kind of reminds me of like a, a hidden passage, like a library, you know, like a, like you pull a book and the, the library uh, wall like swings away, right? Um, I, I kind of like that it's it's like that. And it's also the lines of the knife are cut to kind of make this look integrated, uh, further hiding it on, on this side. Um, so I don't know. I, I just think uh, it looks cool and it functions exactly the way that it was intended to. So, yeah, it's pretty nice. Zara right here opened up. Of course, you can use your thumb or your middle finger uh, to deploy it. It says Arcona on the inside. It's okay. I kind of wish that that wasn't there um, just so I could enjoy the aesthetic of the knife, but it's not really hurting anything. On this side, you can see that these were numbered. Now, numbered knives, it doesn't necessarily mean that they will never do another batch. It might just mean for this particular batch of specifically stonewashed and black, there were only 200, right? Maybe he'll do a different variation in the future and he'll do, do another run of 200. I sure hope he does because this is an awesome, you know, setup. Um, but uh, there were 200 of these, this being number 16. Uh, and then it says M390, uh, which is the right, right there at the top. All of the edges, every edge except for the cutting edge has actually been very much knocked down. So there is, there's no hint of any sharpness anywhere, right? Even this really, you know, the clip, which looks like it's, it's just angular all over the place. No, if you look closely, I mean, every, seriously, every edge is, is really rounded off and really knocked down. So there's no spot on this knife that feels uncomfortable in any way. The pocket clip itself is actually not a hot spot. It doesn't, you know, I feel like I could take this knife out and use it for an extended period of time with bare hands and not get fatigued, right? I mean, the muscles in my hand will wear out faster than this. my skin will become irritated uh, or would become irritated from edges that are not knocked down, right? Uh, it's really nice. The cutting edge, now we're not talking about open L thinness, but it's thin enough. It will definitely slice. It will cut and it is sharpened very well. The tip, this is, you know, more, it's, it, it's a draw point blade. In fact, that the the blade still has that modern aesthetic that goes with the rest of the knife. It's just nowhere near as busy. Um, and you know, aside from this area right here, it really is it really is just a simple draw point blade. So it'll it'll work, right? You've got a long <laughs> you've got a long blade that caters out, or that uh, that uh, tapers out to uh, a nice tip, and it's got a nice elongated cutting edge with a little bit of belly. So slicing, cutting, just doing what you normally do with a pocket knife should be pretty easy. Um, let's see here, backspacer, pretty simple. Just flush with the scales there, runs a little more than half the body length, which is fine. I imagine that has something to do with the balance um, or the, 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 the idea there was to balance things out. There is a gigantic lanyard hole in it, which, you know, normally I'm like, oh, the lanyard hole it just takes away from the, at least they made it a shape that goes along with the rest of the, you know, the handle design, right? Um, so while it is a big hole in the knife, I, it doesn't bother me as much because it wasn't like an afterthought where they're like, let's just throw a hole in there. At least they made it a shape that goes along with everything else. So that's nice. It's out of the way of the clip and the clip has a nice carry depth. That's all the more you're going to see sticking up out of your pocket. A little bit of a ramp under there, but it does that weird up and over curvature versus this curvature that I normally look for. A little bit pinchy, but honestly, it works just fine, and it's got a nice smooth surface to ride on, so in and out of the pocket should be a breeze. I love that the pocket clip has been milled uh, also to match the design of the handle, right? Oftentimes, we see, um, you know, a lot of really, really cool design elements in the handle, and then they just throw some nonsense pocket clip on there, and it really takes away from the design. Not in this case. No, the pocket clip is really cool. I like that we have little, you know, cutouts here on either side, and then it comes up to a peak, and then there's a divider line right down the middle. Really nice. Um, there is no, well, that's, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. I was going to say there's no lock bar insert, but actually... If we take a look right here, I believe, yeah, all of this, this piece right here, you can see the screws in there. All of that is the lock bar insert. It's just been blackened and there was no screw on the outside, so it kind of threw me. So it does have a lock bar insert and there is no way for the thing to over travel because you can see it's connected with this edge right here. It looks like an inset liner lock, but this is all actually part of the same frame lock. So there's a lot of surface contact. The only, you know, exposed part that you see is just this sort of 
<laughs> library library uh, bookshelf, you know, sort of uh, like hidden chamber door thing. Um, <laughs> I just can't – I can't quite explain exactly what I'm talking about, but I feel like I'm painting enough of a picture that you guys get it. Um, the stop pin is actually, to my surprise, I really thought there'd be uh, an integrated um, stop pin, you know, attached to the blade, but it's just, it's just a standard stop pin. Um, and then we have no shouldering actually, but no big deal. Uh, no blade play up, down, left, or right. No lock stick, no double clutch, no pivot lash. Very smooth, very consistent action on the inside. I really can't, you know, I really can't emphasize enough how satisfying the action is. It's very nice and controlled, very smooth. Um, no blade play up, down, left, or right. Did I say that? Nice detent. Got that nice click that we look for. And perfect centering with no detent lash. This is a nice knife. Really, really unique design. Really good looking, right? I think people who are looking to spend money in this territory, which by the way, this knife came in at $325, this is the type of thing that we want to see, right? It's not enough to be titanium. It's not enough to be M390. The precision manufacturing, we expect that, right? Wow, a titanium and M390 frame lock running on bearings. Amazing, we've seen a million of those, right? What we normally see in this territory is Smooth tie, satin finish on the blade, and what you know what that comes down to preference when it comes to like you know the finish. I like to see a little bit more in the design. I like to see a little bit more character, a little bit more personality, right? Now, aesthetic tastes are going to be you know different, but what what people like is is whether or not something looks good is is completely and totally subjective. Um, personally, I don't normally go for stuff that looks like this, you know, the sort of like, uh, sort of AI advanced, you know, super future, <laughs> but, but it's cool. And the whole design goes together. That's what I look for. Does the, does everything look good? Does it look like it's all one thing? Not like it was pulled from different, you know, different ideas, different designs. Like you had three different people not knowing what the other people were doing with the design and you're like, you make the blade, I'll make the pocket clip and you make the scales. Well, it doesn't go together, but I mean, what are we going to do? Now nah, it looks like uh, it was all one, you know, idea. Like this was uh, from the start, all one idea. And I like it, especially considering that this design aesthetic does not pull away from functionality, ease of manipulation. It is very easy to disengage the liner lock, to deploy the blade. The balance is good. The edge geometry is good. All of the ergonomic positions are good. There are no hot spots. It's just nice, right? On top of that, it really does feel like it's giving quite a bit extra uh, considering the, the, the price tier that it's in. This knife comes in at $325 and absolutely feels as good as knives that cost $100 more, in some cases uh, closer to $200 more. Um, this is machined very well, and the attention to detail is absolutely there. Um, this thing brought everything to the table at the $325 price point, and I have absolutely no problem whatsoever uh, with that price. Those of you who have this, by the time you're watching this, if you actually have this knife and you're watching it, I can almost guarantee that you love it. I can almost guarantee that you were overly impressed with it. Um, this is cool. Uh, generally, the uh, you know the the people that uh, Levon partners up with, as far as like listings on the Knife Nuts podcast website, it's usually pretty good stuff. And this is. This is one of my favorite things. Is coming. Obviously, you know, I, I'm really into the the, uh, the sharp eye design stuff that they do. But um, I I, uh, I thought this was awesome, especially you know considering again, this is not normally the aesthetic that I go for. But once I had it in hand, I thought, man, this is pretty cool. <sighs> Definitely a recommendable knife. I seriously, I, I think the price is freaking excellent on this thing. I think this is very unique, very different, and it's refreshing to get to handle something like this versus all of the other, you know, incredibly similar stuff that I, I generally handle, right? So if you can get your hands on this for 325 or less, absolutely recommendable. I really hope Ivan B does more of these uh, with the, maybe, maybe changing this or that for the next run, but this is awesome. Uh, the Buran, uh, very recommendable. It'll go on my uh, most recommended knives playlist, so make sure and check that out. That's going to be pretty much it today, guys. 
please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check that uh, check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.